They announced that MGF will return next week. Serious question. Is MGF in charge of his own stuff? Did, yeah. Did he say, I made my return, I will not be on TV this week, but you will advertise my return, and then I'll be there next week? I presume so, yes. Because that's a smart thing to do. Yeah. Roosh then congratulates MGF, but also calls him out. Roosh versus MJF? That'd be interesting. <laughs> no shit. <laughs> Did MJF book that one? Uh, he may not have. Okay. <laughs> that maybe maybe should a... watch uh, that match with Cody Chun. That may have been out of his hands. <laughs> the Forbidden Door Casino Gauntlet match. Okay. Mm. This is the second time they've done this. Yeah. When they announced the second time, I was I was aghast. Could not believe they were doing it again. The first match was like fun, but I had so many problems with it. And the main problem with it was it felt like a TNA match from like 2009 because it was just a wacky match. It was called a gauntlet, even though it's not a gauntlet and nobody knew anything. I'm talking the fans didn't know what the fuck was going on. The announcers didn't know what the fuck was going on. They announced it was a casino gauntlet match with sudden death rules. Everybody was baffled. Like the announcers were asking each other, is this the last guy? I don't know. How many guys are there? I don't know. What are the intervals? I don't know. Nobody uh, fucking knew anything. They, they did at one point early on announce there would be random intervals. Yes. <laughs> hey, okay. at least they said it. Well, that's my point with this one here. Yeah. So the first one happened. I see. Okay. The first one happened, and as I watched it, it just felt like this is fucking incompetence. Like, get your fucking act together. How many guys are there? Tell us. Put a goddamn clock on the screen or whatever. And I was like irritated. Like, fuck. We don't know what the fuck you're thinking when you do this. Like, you got to tell us some shit. So, this one starts, okay? And I, to be fair, I didn't learn this till later. At one point, they did announce that there, would, there were conceivably 21 men. Because it's that's the casino part of it. 21. I see. Okay. So, they did announce that. But they didn't tell us who. There was a clock on the Tron. But they did not put the clock on the screen. So we had no idea what the intervals were or who was coming out. And it suddenly occurred to me that, yes, it is the clusterfuck. They just can't say that on television. Mm -hmm. This is now, okay, the first time it felt like it was incompetence. Now that they've done the incompetence twice, it's by design. So at that point, I was like, okay, fine. Whatever the fucking rules are, as long as I know. And the rules are, there really ain't no rules. This this Tony Khan character, as I've said before, is a goddamn fucking maniac. That's his character. Yeah. He's a crazy psychopath. He's like Dario Cueto. I was just going to say, except yes. Except much crazier. Yeah. Dario Cueto never brought someone to the fucking building with a flamethrower to burn his fucking EVPs to, to a fucking crisp. Tony did. Yeah, that's true. He's like, get that fucking thing. Let's go burn these guys up. So he's a crazy man. Okay? And he has created this match, which is fucking chaos. Who's in it? Doesn't matter. What are the intervals? Fuck off, I'll tell you. I'm just going to hit that goddamn music when it's time. That's what it is now. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when it first happened, I was like, how the fuck? And this one actually, this one is actually how the fuck. How the fuck do you not announce Mystico in Los Angeles? Because that guy is a legitimate draw. I mean, bigger than almost anyone in AEW. You put Mystico's name on the marquee in, in uh, you know, a southern state, and he's going to draw. It was a mystery. But, you know, part of me when it was starting was thinking, why didn't you just give us, like, a rundown of who was going to be in it? Like, say, you know, if you go to the show, you're going to see all these stars. They didn't do that. But then as I'm watching, I'm like, I like it. These the fucking Hechicero is out here. Shota Umino. Sh fucking Shota Umino is in it. And so by the time it was over, I was like, they don't need to do these too often. And right now they already are because Will Ospreay just won one like of two these matches yeah. like a month ago. He's, they've done the same match twice with the same winner. Mm. But like every four or five months, they need to find a better name than the Casino Gauntlet. I wish they could say the Clusterfuck, but they need to say next Wednesday, the Clusterfuck's coming. You're like, oh man, fucking just nuttiness. Like, who's going to be in it? Who fucking knows? Like, what are the intervals? I don't know. How long is the goddamn thing going to go? Who knows? 
They should do it once where like two guys get in the ring and it's a flash pin and it's fucking over. Yes. Like, yeah. let people know this fucking thing could go anywhere. So at the end of the day, and all, everyone in it was awesome. And that helps a lot. It was kind of ridiculous because you had like 18, I don't know how many people were in there by the end. I Probably, only counted nine. Okay, nine, whatever. Yeah. So there were only nine people, but it was like two guys would get in and do crazy shit. Then, like, one guy would bail outside, and he'd never get back in the ring because a third guy would come in and do a bunch of crazy shit. Then a guy would get out, and the fourth guy would come in, and the two guys out never got back in. It was just crazy shit, and we just saw nine straight crazy shits in a row, and then a winner. I liked it. So the first two were Jay White and Pac. I do want to say real quick before the match actually starts, uh, no one on TV has used the phrase Bullet Club Gold in months and months. It's called the Bang Bang Gang. But Juice came out still wearing a Bullet Club t-shirt. So apparently the affiliation... No one's smartened him up. He's been gone. Yeah, or the affiliation is still official. So Pac versus Jay White goes exactly like you think it would. Pac beats his ass for all five minutes or however many minutes it was. Mystico is number three. He runs wild. The crowd loves him. And we it's kind of... The, it's not as extreme as we were talking about with Tanahashi at uh, Collision where this is clearly the 2024 version of the guy. Like... You go back and watch 19, uh, 19, but, uh, 2004 Mystico and watch this. It's not the same person. It is the same person, but it's been a rough 20 years. But uh, still look good. And in the end, uh, he actually pulled off. He actually botched the springboard the first time, but hit the springboard the, the hit the springboard, and then he hurricane run onto the floor where he lands on his feet. It was still just insanely awesome. So he still did some, some great stuff. They go to commercial. They come back. Will Ospreay is immediately number four. Biggest reaction all night. Biggest star oh, of the yeah. entire He's night. the biggest star in the company by by miles at this point. Yep, yep. And then uh, seconds later, because they had to get you know guys in there after the commercial break, Shota Uno is number five. So we have three AW, AEW guys plus stars from Mexico or a star from Mexico and a star from Japan. I'm thinking, all right, we can get Michael Oku in there to be a star from Europe. Maybe someone from soft ground wrestling in Uganda. Unfortunately, that was not to be. Uh, and then immediately, as, as soon as I'm watching Umino and Osprey, I said, you know what? We're good with five. Don't bring anyone else into the ring. Let these two wrestle. That's all I need to see. Claudio Castagnoli was six. He is frantically chasing Jay White. As he's running him down, he's kicking everyone else's ass on accident along the way. I laughed at that. He puts Jay in the giant swing. We go to commercial two. Then Leo Rush is seven. He does some fun big man, little man stuff with Claudio. Orange Cassie is eight. All bandaged up after his uh, encounter earlier with Trent. And of course, this maniac Tony Khan would send this guy out all beat up. He doesn't care. <laughs> Get your ass in there and cluster this fucking thing up. Echicero is nine. I believe he's the last man, unless I missed somebody, it's possible. Echicero gets in this ring. He does 800 wildly different but equally awesome things. Yeah, he's my favorite guy in the God, match. God, it was great. He's my favorite guy in the match. Mystico does some Mystico shit. The place is going crazy. Pack is running wild. Juice runs out to screw Pack again. And then he runs to the back. <laughs> Just stay out there. Help your buddy Jay. So Jay is about to pin Orange. Osprey leaves him out with a hidden blade. Osprey does some Osprey shit on Orange. Pins him with an Oscutter. Incredible main event. Better than a lot of stuff at the pay-per-view. And that was a good pay-per-view. Yeah, I liked this a lot. Then Swerve came out and they had the stare down. And uh, I don't know what the fuck's going on. Because... It seems way too early for either of these men to lose. Well, well, I mean, Osprey's losing. I mean, if Osprey's winning the title, there's absolutely no earthly reason that you should do it here and not in Wembley. So the fact that they're not doing it at Wembley tells you Swerve is winning, okay? So then the next question is, well, are they doing a rematch at Wembley? If they're doing a rematch at Wembley, like, it's just bizarre because how does Osprey go from losing to getting a rematch? And the idea people have mentioned is, well, he wins the Owen Cup. But the Owen Cup, the the finals are the Wednesday, a week from Wednesday after the pay-per-view. So unless they wait until after the pay-per-view to start the Owen and put Osprey in because he, you know, he lost his title shot, so he's going to try for another one, you'd have to do the entire tournament on one Dynamite, one Rampage, one Collision, and then the finals the following Wednesday. Which you could do, but it seems rushed. So the other option is, well, if you start the Owen before the pay-per-view, then Will Ospreay is the international champion, getting a world title shot on pay-per-view, 
while simultaneously in a tournament to get a shot at a title that he could win at the pay-per-view. Hmm. That doesn't make any sense. Oh, no. So the other option is he's actually not going for the world title at Wembley, and he's going to, uh, you know, lose to Swerve and have to face somebody else at Wembley, get a win there, and then uh, go on down the road to another one. So I don't know which one it's going to be, but uh, it is weird. And yes, for those of you wondering, we are going to have an Owen Hart Cup and a uh, tournament for the... uh, whichever title it is, TNT title. So we have a men's tournament, a women's tournament, and a TNT title qualifying match tournament. Three going on in June. Mm. That's a lot of tournaments, dude. Tournament mania. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I can only assume that if Osprey is going to lose in this title match, then that means that will be the day that Callis screws him. Could be. Because there's... No way I beat him. Personally, I would not have them lose less of 2024, but here's the match they've booked, and they got to figure out what to do. Hey, if you love this clip, have I got a deal for you. WrestlingObserver.com. Do you have a commute? Do you work out at the gym? Do you like listening to audio on your headphones or your earbuds or whatever the kids use today? Well, WrestlingObserver.com will give you all the audio you'll ever need in your life. Over 15,000 audio shows. Every audio show that we have ever done, dating back to 2005, is available for subscribers at WrestlingObserver.com. Every time a new show comes out, you can podcast it directly to your phone. If you have a commute, as noted, if you go to the gym, if you like to lift weights and listen to Granny review soap operas, well, WrestlingObserver.com gets you full access to all of these shows and all of these archives. You can go back and listen to TNA reviews from 2010. You can go back and listen to reviews of every WWE pay-per-view, every big story that's ever happened in wrestling. You can get access to that at WrestlingObserver.com. Plus, full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter every week. 40,000 words of news and information in pro wrestling. Why get all your scoops off Reddit, which aren't even accurate most of the time? Go right to the source, the Wrestling Observer newsletter. You also get Observer archives dating back to 1990. So check it out today. Thousands of issues of the Wrestling Observer newsletter. Tens of thousands of hours of audio. All for $12.99 per month or as low as $9.99 if you sign up for a year. You'll never, you'll never run out of audio if you subscribe to WrestlingObserver.com. So head up there, check it out today, and I'll talk to you again after a while.